Welcome to another Math Rescue video. In the first part of our rate problem topic, we are going to study the rate of travel problems. These are problems that use distance equal rate times time formula. The easiest way to solve these problems is to use a table for your information. You will usually have two objects or people that are moving or traveling, and each will need a distance, rate, and time. The easiest way to solve these problems is to use a table for your information. You will usually have two objects or people that are moving or traveling, or maybe two scenarios, and each will need a distance, rate, and time. Here is a sample table. You will need four columns and a row for each object, plus a totals row. You may not always use the totals row, though. Let's work an example. Plane A leaves Los Angeles for New York City at 500 miles per hour at the same time that plane B leaves New York City for Los Angeles on the same path traveling 650 miles per hour. The distance from LA to NYC is 3,000 miles. Assuming the planes do not make any stops on the trip, how long until the planes meet? Here I have boxed and underlined information to help me understand this problem. We know that plane A has a rate of 500 miles per hour and plane B has a rate of 650 miles per hour. And we know the distance between the two cities is 3,000 miles. We also know that the planes left their respective cities at the same time, are traveling on the same path, and will not make any stops on their journeys. It's important to check here that our units all match. In this problem, they do. We are given rates in miles per hour and a distance in miles, and we'll be finding a time in hours. If they didn't match, we would need to convert some of them until we had all units the same. We can put the rate values into the table because these are given to us. How can we relate the total trip distance to the individual distances? We know the distance between the two cities is 3,000 miles. The planes are going to meet somewhere between these two cities. As an example, if plane A has traveled, let's say, 1,000 miles and meets plane B there, then we know that plane B has traveled 2,000 miles, which is the total distance minus the distance plane A has already traveled. Does this make sense? So we know the total distance is 3,000, and we can put this in the totals row. But we don't know the individual distances, so we let those be variables. Notice I've let D be the distance, and have added a subscript to each distance to indicate which plane's distance we are discussing. Now what about the time? Notice that the problem says the planes are leaving their respective cities at the same time. This means when they meet, they will have been traveling for the same amount of time. If both planes left their cities at 5 p.m. and meet at 6 p.m., as an example, then they have both traveled for one hour. So their times are the same, and we'll just call it t. Now we need to set up our equations. Use the distance formula twice, once across each row, to obtain the equations you see here. Since we have a total distance, we can also sum the distance column to obtain another equation. So, dA equals 500 times t, db equals 650 times t, and dA plus db equals 3000. All that's left now is to solve for the item we want. We are asked to find how long until the planes meet, that is, how much time has passed, so we want to find t. There are many ways to solve systems of equations, as you have probably already learned. You could sum the first two equations to get dA plus db on the left, then substitute the left side with 3000 and solve for t. Or, as we're going to do, you can substitute dA and dB into the third equation and solve for t. Once you substitute, you can obtain like terms on the left and then divide by 1150 to obtain t, which is 2.61 hours. You can write this in terms of hours and minutes by multiplying the decimal, 0 0.61, by 60 minutes to get 2 hours and 36.5 minutes for the final answer. This is how every rate of travel problem works. Sometimes you will have one object but two scenarios, like different rates or different paths. Just plug the information into the table, use the distance formula, and find your answer. Pay attention to what the question asks. If you need to find what time something will happen, you probably will need to find the total time elapsed and then add that to the starting time to find the finish time. Don't neglect that last step. You can see two more examples worked out on the blog post that goes with this video that I'll link to in the bottom. I hope you enjoyed watching and have learned something new.